I've been in Philadelphia pretty much all my life. After being in Philadelphia, at the age 18, decided to do comedy. At the age 18, did comedy, loved it, had a ball doing it, did a bunch of amateur nights, won them. After winning several amateur nights, I decided to take the career seriously. So I told my mom I wanted to do it for a living. But when I decided to do it for a living, they stopped the amateur nights. Pretty f***ed up, but I couldn't do nothing about it. So my mom said, look, this is what you want to do. She'll take care of me. Mom took me under a wing, paid for a lot of stuff. I found a way to make money doing stand-up comedy. After making money doing stand-up comedy, I met a guy named Keith Robinson. For those people who don't know Keith Robinson, Keith Robinson has crazy sexy Sundays here at Helium Nightclub. And uh, Keith is pretty much responsible for a lot of my success because Keith took me under his wing, which I needed. You know, I didn't know what I thought I needed to know about comedy. So Keith taught me everything I needed to know. You know, took me to the places I needed to go to. Uh, you know, made sure I was in the right position. Um, as being in the right position and listening to a good mentor, man, things kind of fell into place. I turned in just uh, not just comedy, you know, I decided to go into acting. And um, after going into acting, you know, things started to happen pretty fast. So at age 24, I was starting the movie Paper Soldiers. And at the Paper Soldiers, the rest just kind of fell into place. I mean, tons of stuff, you know what I mean? But more importantly, I held on to my comedian career. So after holding on to your comedian career, you realize what's important. And that's the people that supported you when you came up. So you stay true to them. You can't predict your path. You only know what you want to do. But you don't know how you're going to get to your goal. You know, and uh, my goal, you know, came with a lot of me being in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, with Paper Soldiers, I was performing at a comedy club. Dame Jazz happened to be in the audience and thought I was funny and said, Kev, I got a movie I want you to do. They say, no, I'm doing a movie, you know. It's all about who you know and, and the position that you put yourself in. The soul playing. I knew the director. He allowed me to audition. I did a good job. And, I wound up getting the part. You know, regardless of what people said about it, the movie did a lot for me. Showed people that I was talented on camera and, you know, allowed me to put myself in a different position in life. So I took it. I took the opportunity and I ran with it. Are you an athletic uh, guy? Are you good in sports? Oh, man, I wish I was. You know, I thought I was going to the NBA when I was a kid until I stopped growing because I was the tallest kid in class. What, like, what, what grade were you the tallest kid in class? Fourth. Right. Fourth grade, fourth grade. And when you, the problem is you probably went around lording it over people like, I'm I, the tallest guy. I swear to you, I did. I talked a lot of trash, man. And my brother, my brother was actually really good at football. He was like varsity, honorable mention, all public. So I was like, you know, I want to play football. I told my mom and dad. They was like, cool, go ahead. And I played a little league, right? Mm -hmm. And I played for this, this 100 pounds. I don't know if you know how the weight classes go. Sure, yeah. But I weighed like 65 pounds. But in my neighborhood, all we had was 100 pounds. Right. So I was like, I want to play. And I was all excited. I got equipment. My dad was excited for me. But it just didn't go to I planned, man, because I got scared. I don't like contact. And my dad, like, I sat at the bench. I'm serious, man. I'm, I'm an actor. Don't punch me. Don't hit me. Nothing. Like, my you don't dad, even want someone rubbing up against you. I don't you. like yeah. contact at right. all. And my dad got mad. He would come to every game and make a scene, you know, because I didn't play. I sat at the bench. He was yelling at the coach. Put my son in the game. Put my son in the damn game. We losing by 30 points. We ain't going to win. I bought all that equipment. I want to see him get hit. Right. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's truth. a good dad, yeah. It's, it's yeah. the truth. So, so the coach got tired of hearing him. He's like, all right, come here. You know, I want you to get in the game. He's like, we're going to do a two sweep through the second hole. You get the ball. It's a true story. And I was like, coach, I don't know what that is because in practice, you tell me I don't have to. He's like, shut up. Get in the game. Right? Right, right. I get in the game. He hand me the ball. I start running. I trip and fall. I hit my tooth on the back of this guy's cleat. I start bleeding. Passed out, right? You passed out? Because I'm not. I don't like blood. It was contact. So, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody turned uh -huh. around. I'm going to tell you how big of a jerk my dad is. Everybody turned around and looked at my dad, and he got mad. He's like, what y'all looking at me for? I ain't put him in the game. I know he ain't good. <laughs> the, the coach did. So I, don't, I don't like that. I don't deal Distancing with Distancing himself as much as possible. <laughs> if you want to see an awesome clip of a young Dwayne The Rock Johnson, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. <clears throat> well, originally it started off in the World Wrestling Federation. I was Rocky Maivia, who was a... Uh, a kind of a young upstart.